everybody, it's Doug here, Doug Mr. Guy on Board Game Geek. I'm bringing you a new playthrough. This time it's going to be of the game The Seventh Continent. Now, I'm going to stage this, I'm going to create this upfront contract with you guys and tell you that, first off, I have not played this yet, so this will be a learning blind playthrough. I've read the rules and I've watched some stuff, like oftentimes. I got this game in the mail Saturday. I've had a chance to review the rules, but what I like to do is show you what that experience would be like if you too were trying to learn this right off the bat. And I'm sure there's going to be a ton of people that are able to offer me awesome corrections and information so I appreciate that up front the second thing I'm going to tell you is we are going to spoil the first curse and I'll explain what that means in a bit so we're going to spoil a lot of things this is going to be full of spoilers so if you don't want to watch it if you just want to see how to set it up then keep watching but once we get into either the second half of this video depending on how long the setup takes or the second video I will be spoiling things and I just want to be real clear on that. This is a definitely a story-driven game. However, there's a ton of content. So while I might spoil some of it for you, there's so much else in the box there. I mean, I don't know, there's like a thousand cards or something like that. It's not going to... I'm exaggerating. I don't think there's a thousand cards, but there's at least 600. Maybe there's more than 600. And uh, we're going to keep... Uh, we're going to go on with that. We're going to tell this cool story. And I don't want to ruin it for you if you don't want to see it. So we're going to start there. And as always... Um, I'm going to play this in episodes. I'm going to try and keep them down to a, a certain amount of time. But I don't know this game well enough to know what that's going to look like. And at some point, I'm going to show you how to save the game because it's one of the features of the game that's pretty darn cool it's because uh, they can be rather long. And we may not complete this uh, curse in this series. We'll try. We're going to try. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to get started with the setup. I'm going to show you how to do that. And we're going to get going. It's going to be a lot of fun. Let's get rocking with Seventh Continent. So the first thing that happens in Seventh Continent during setup is we're going to choose a character, and I've already selected mine. So we're going to take these two right here, and we're going to get rid of the rest, and I'm going to go over these two characters with you. So first off, we have Elliot Pendleton. Now, what this symbol means, just to get you starting familiar with the symbology, this means that this is in your hand. Now, with your character card, you can keep it in your hand. It doesn't matter. You're never going to get rid of it, or you can lay it down in front of you. I'm going to have them laid out in front of us, but the rest of our cards will actually be in our hand when we play them. We're going to talk about Elliot Pendleton. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to read his backstory. It says Elliot Pendleton. Now, keep in mind, let's talk about the backstory of the whole game. I'm not going to read the whole thing to you because you can go read it yourself, but essentially it's, it's 1907, and we have returned from an adventure on the seventh continent only to realize that we have been cursed. Yes, we've been cursed. And we're going to die horribly if we can't get back there and lift the curse that's been placed upon us. So we're heading back to the Seventh Continent to further explore and make an effort to lift the curse that's, that's been placed on our, our bodies. And in this case, we're going to be spoiling the, or playing through the curse that is the one that they recommend to play through for your first time. And you can play multiple curses, but we're only going to play the one. So let's get started with that. So here is the story of Elliot Pendleton. How did this young Serb, who did not speak a word of English, manage to obtain the position of chief physician on an internationally renowned expedition to a mysterious continent? <laughs> Sorry guys, some allergy ridden today. Less than 10 years after arriving clandestinely in the United States, because he's awesome, apparently. This is a secret that Vasil Kostovac, alias Elliot Pendleton, will certainly keep until the day he dies. Okay, that's his story. And we're, what, what does Elliot Pendleton do? Okay, well, we talked about that. That's his hand. That's his portrait. Here's his cool little mini. They're really small, but they're neat. And then this is his little campfire, which we'll use at a certain time. Okay, his special ability, this will become evident. Now, they all have a certain special ability here that for a move action, if you move to a terrain card where there is an explorer or fire figure, it's minus one energy. And we'll explain all that later. Okay. Then, during the results step of an action you are involved in, you may discard two cards with the keyword stamina from your hand and or your inventory in order to apply the following effects. That's an automatic success. That star means a success. So that is Elliot Pendleton. That's what he's going to do. 
Okay, we're going to move him aside. We're going to talk about Mary Kingsley now. Now again, Mary Kingsley's here trying to get rid of the curse. So, it says, Mary Kingsley. At the age of 30, Mary went off alone exploring Africa. In order to complete her late father's work through the contract with the local tribes, some of which were cannibalistic, she learned jungle survival, canoeing, and discovering new species of fish. Upon returning to her native England, she received an offer to join an expedition to a new mysterious continent. She decided to postpone writing her memoirs, as the lure of adventure always comes first. And she's cursed, so that's probably more important for her right now. So, okay, Mary Kingsley, during the item step of an action you are involved in, you may discard one card with the keyword skill from your hand and your or your inventory in order to apply the following. That's like a super lucky thing, the, the seven in the star. So I thought, I don't know how, how often this is going to come into play, but it'll come into play enough, I think, so we're going to do that. And then again, this ability here is the same that all the characters have. So we picked our two characters. That's the first part of our setup. Okay, next up, we're going to place the satchel and journal card. Now, I'm going to read this to you, and then we're going to place it face up, and I'll explain what the, the rest means on the back. So, the satchel and journal card. This old satchel means the world to you and holds all your most valuable discoveries. The journey inside, it, it contains the notes that you and your companions took during the previous expedition to the seventh continent. It serves as a very valuable, or a very invaluable source of knowledge. Okay. All right, so how does this work? Well, we're going to be playing with two characters, so we're going to look right here. This tells us that we are going to each have three, we can have in our hand, three green cards, three blue cards, and three dice. So at this point in time, I'm going to get grab three dice, and I'm going to place them with each of the character. Now, we don't actually roll these dice. They're used to track uses on items that we're going to have. So we can have three, three effective items, and there's a way to combine items to make it so uh, you can get more items on the table. And then it says, store all cards you obtain under this card. So what we're going to do with this is we're just going to kind of put it to the side of the board, and you'll see how that works in a moment. Well, when we get playing, because we'll be storing things under there. You'll see that. Okay, next up, we're going to choose one or more clue. You can see there's a bunch of them. I'm not going to let you read them. I'm, I'm keeping them safe from you. But we're going to pick this first one, the Voracious Goddess. That's going to be our first one that we do. The rest are going away. And that's going to, they're going to go back in the box. Okay, so it says uh, uh, we're going to choose one or, more of these, one or more of these cards, and we're going to place it under, the, the, um, our, under our satchel. But first we're going to talk about what it does, and we're going to read it. Okay, so it says, The Voracious Goddess. Since you returned from the expedition, the visions of a strange, gloomy idol that seems to be calling you has begun, has been haunting your nights. The piercing cries of a few seagulls pull you out of a deep slumber. They sound so strange as though they were laughing. You try your best to understand. Where on earth are you? How did you end up in this place? Your memories are clouded and you seem unable to remember. While shifting through your journal, you come across a handwritten sheet upon which some upon which something that looks like a route was drawn, along with several statues. As it so happens, one of those statues looks exactly like the idol from your restless dreams. Begin the adventure by putting out the 0-1-0 card into play. Each player places their figure onto it. So we're going to do that, but we're going to start also with this. Okay. The Voracious Goddess. This is the map that we, that, uh, we were being told about right here. Okay, you can see that there is a dotted line that's X. We start on this coastline. We follow this up. There's this ravine. These are clues. This is a clue. I'm going to have to look at this, guys, often. And this little symbol here means that it goes in the, up into the satchel. Okay. Whoop. And we're going to put that aside. That is going in, in underneath our satchel. So we'll just keep that in mind. Okay. Okay, now remember, this is a card-based game. So what did the, 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 the clue tell us to do? It told us to get out card 010. So that would be up in here somewhere. I think it's going to be the very last one. Now these are all 01. 010. Okay, we're getting too far. We're going to flip back here. We're going to find 010. We're almost there. Almost there. Okay, there's multiple 113s. There we go. 011. Oh, come on, guys. We're so close to it. There we go. 010. But you never take the gold one. You always take this one first. Okay, we're going to place that one down. Push those cards aside. Now I'll do that mainly off camera. Normally, I just wanted to show you. And it says... Thick columns of yellowish smoke rise up from cracks in the volcanic rock to the east. The, the peaks of a rocky cliff look down, mocking the ocean below. We're going to flip this over. This is our starting point, and we're going to put our two peoples onto this card. And now we're ready to start adventuring. Well, not yet. Now, 
it did say to place that out and we're going to take this and we put it we put the clue card under our satchel and we're good to go okay next up we're going to do some other things we also have to find the curse cards okay let me do that next up we're going to prepare our action deck so these are the 35 cards that make up the action deck we're also then going to these are the skill cards so the 35 cards that do this these are common the skill they're specific and then there's ones that are specific to each character so here I have uh, Elliot's and here I have Mary Kingsley they're going to get shuffled into this deck as well and then we're also going to take the curse card shuffle that in there and we're also going to take four of these curse cards that just simply say death is lurking one two three four that happened before exactly so we're going to shuffle all that together that's going to make our basic skill deck that is our source of energy it's a source of stuff that we're going to do it's how we create successes you'll see all how all of that works as we play but i'm going to get it shuffled up off camera and we'll show what that looks like okay there's our action deck all shuffled up and ready to go let's hope we can survive this all right now it also says if we have the next thing assembled if this is the discard pile we're going to put this up there too it looks like this um, i'm going to put that off to the side along with this pile. Now you'll see this as we play. I'm going to put them next to each other because that's where we're going to be. That tray is where we're going to be just discarding our action skills, and you'll see that because that, that partly has something to do with the end of the game. At the end of the game, actually, how you lose. Okay. We so the next thing we do is we're going to set aside. We're going to sort exploration cards by area. Now that's already done. I've already done all of that work, and I'll sh kind of show you what it is. But uh, it, you saw how I had all the cards separated. So. You can see here that uh, these cards are all separated by number. Now, there's a lot of them with the expansions, and I'll talk about that in a second, because I've, I've included three of the expansions in here already, and not a couple others. But um, back in the back here, you see these exploration cards. That's what they're talking about, these one, twos, and threes. Now, I've got to figure out, I think I need to make sure they're all in the same box, because I think that's important. But it's okay, because I can get to them. That's what that means, anyway. Uh, th those are the, so there's the two types. There's the exploration cards and the adventure cards. I've already done all of that, okay? Now, I've already done this step two of taking the adventure card indicated there, and now I'm going to place an exploration token, or exploration cards, rather, that match these two symbols onto the, the, the deck. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the level one cards, and these are supposed to be random, so I'm going to shuffle them up, and you can see that now these are going to pertain to the area that I'm in. It's kind of interesting how this works. Very, very thematic um, and cool, right? At least that's the plan. Now, the next thing we're going to do, I think also, I don't know if there's any further, any more to the setup, no. But we do also have this banished cards thing, which I'm going to set aside, and the past where we're going to put exploration cards and stuff that we've already visited. Um, and uh, that's, see, it says on there what you do with this. It says uh, uh, you may lay this uh, this divider next to the board and use it to store discarded adventure and exploration cards during the game. And that's because there's a saved game feature. So you want to have all these things out. Now, I'm kind of concerned that this game's going to get big, so I'm probably going to have to shuffle some things around. Um, but I'm shuffling this and getting ready to set up. So I've shuffled the heck out of these cards now, and we're going to set... Let me see, I'll just cut them one more time. We're going to set one here. And you notice these arrows show that they could be placed in a certain way, so this goes like this. These usually um, uh, work in a way that uh, they most all, almost always have that and, until you get some specific cards. But anyway, then we're also going to have one here. I'm going to put the rest of them back. Now, I have shuffled the heck out of them, which is good, so we'll be able to get back to them because we're going to lay out more. Now, what, am I, what are some of these things? There's symbols all over these cards, right? So, if I, I talk about these ones first because that's easiest. This signpost is the symbol for. Um, it, so let me show you here. There's all these symbols. There's tons and tons of symbols. Pathfinding, escaping. Okay, so that's the symbol for that. And what that means is we're going to have a hand of cards. Now it says that I'm forced to draw a zero. Now the the that deck that we created with all those cards in it, the character specific cards and the curse cards and that. That is our our. Uh, counts as our energy. That's how much energy we have to complete this before we fall over dead from the curse or just pure exhaustion. So we have to be very careful how we spend them. You note that this card requires zero. Now I can draw cards if I want to get a couple in my hand and it requires zero successes. And what's a success? Well on the cards there are these stars and now they sometimes even combine to create two stars if you're lucky. 
um, but they count as a success to get something. So if I wanted to move um, uh, Elliot to here, I, for this, I actually don't have to do anything. I just move him. He takes the action. Okay. And actions are kind of weird in this game. You can keep, if, as long as the players agree, each turn the, the players can, the same player can take a couple actions in a row. It just depends on how much energy we want to burn doing things. Okay. Now, we're not going to first draw this 009 card. We're first going to move and, ha and deal with this before we do that. Okay. Uh, and then you can also see that from this card, it's got a, you can move for one, uh, plus zero, plus, and that means you can go in whatever, uh, uh, what's that directional one? i got to remember what that means exactly. It is the directional one. There's, like I said, there's tons of symbology in here, so at first we're probably going to go a little slowly. I'm going to have to look that up. I don't see what that is, but I don't think it's relevant for the moment, so we're going to kind of move on. Oh, each involved character moves his or her figure in the same reachable terrain direction. So, to, yeah, so that's uh, if we move in the, the direction. So then we also can go up here. We got the same thing here. Then we also over here have a special location. That map symbol means that that's some place we can explore. The actual term of the map symbol is go see or investigate. So you can see right here, and I'll zoom in so you can see it more clearly. Okay, uh, it says it requires one energy, zero successes. So it's very very easy to do, and it will take us to card zero zero five. Okay, now. There's no uh, fog of war exploration token here. Now down here is a resource that we can we have available to us if we're on that space. That's stone, so we can use it to perhaps craft things. There is crafting in this game as well. And that concludes our setup. So the next thing we're going to go is into the turn sequence. I'm going to talk about that. I said this first video I'll probably just do this and that'll be the end of it. So let me back back out so I can show you the turn sequence. So the basics of the turn sequence is we're going to take an action, okay? And those actions are going to do all kinds of things, so it's hard to say what, a, what that action is going to do, but it also shows you that the, there's certain types of icons. Uh, this is an action related, an active action that a player might take. This one is an action that all players, all involved characters, have to take. This, this brown one, that's with the red burst border around it, the brown one says the related effect may only be applied during an action of this type. So it depends on what the symbol is in here, but it has to be a very specific action. And then this action with the red one, this has already been performed and may not be applied again. So that's how the actions kind of work. There's also this one that means that uh, this one means that the players must draw the exact number of cards. It's a lock, so it has to do exactly what it says. And the stairs say that this action cannot be taken unless all characters are involved. So they all have to go. And then there's some restrictions. Then we're going to do, when we're, we're going to resolve an action, we're going to check for items first and use one of our item points. Then we're going to pay the cost. We're going to determine the, the cost of the action, the energy. Now there's some ways to mitigate that too. We can reduce the energy cost by increasing the difficulty if there's more than one, one character going on in adventure. That's why I want to play with two. Didn't want to play it exactly solo. Okay. If a character is involved, use card effects from their hands so they can both do that for each, each, uh, available resource you can craft you can use the craft action okay we're gonna draw as many cards as the action costs etc then we're gonna check for the results now there's gonna be good results and bad results depending on if we succeed or fail then we're gonna discard all of their the all of the other cards and curse cards that we revealed we're gonna to get to keep one uh, card to toward our hand that's the skill card the active player may choose one skill card from the from those that were revealed during the results step and add it to his or her hand. Well, most of the basic cards are skill cards. Okay. Then we're going to deal with the consequences, and we're going to check our hand size limit. That's that's a turn, guys. That's that's how it works. So it's going to be pretty straightforward. So in the next video, we'll start to see some. We saw some minor spoilers. Nothing tragic. We just know that we're in search of these idols. The voracious goddess is after us. And we can know that. We can check that anytime. We can always go back to our satchel and see what's under here, and look at our clue always. So it's always available to us as players to do that. And so in the next video, we're going to get started. I'll just leave this as an instructional video. So that way you know that we have nothing but spoilers. But I did want to talk about one more thing. Now I did add in not all of the, uh, but there's tons of, uh, but the Kickstarter, I got tons of extra stuff. So you're going to see things, probably some things in this video that are not in the base game if you were to buy it retail when it comes out retail. However, um, what we do, what I did add was these three in because these ones just get added to the game as normal. They just the cards filter in, so we might run into some of these cards, but not likely because they are quest specific. This is the Forbidden Sanctuary. There's another curse, the Swamp of Madness, and the Icy Maze. 
I've put those in there as well. Now, so we may run into some adventures related to those, but we're not going to run into the actual um, one that we did. Now, I, I also have some others. I have this one, the Path of, of Repentance, which is not in there. I did not include that, but it is something you can play. Plus, we also have Fear of the Devourer, which is a, a thing a, that cr has this creature. There's some miniatures in here. Not going to play that. And we also have Facing the Elements, which adds storms and stuff to the, the island. We're not going to play that either. So, that's... Uh, okay, now that really concludes the setup, guys. That's going to be it for us. We're going to basically have fun on the island, or on the seventh continent. We're going to explore it and try to overcome this curse. Hopefully, we're able to do that, and we survive. Now, this game uh, is pretty rules heavy, but it seems intuitive. We'll see how this goes. Again, I, I haven't played it yet. Um, I read the rules and watched some videos, so I'm prefacing that up front. That's why I do not list my videos as instructional, because I never know what I'm doing when I get into this and how heavy the rule sets are going to be. But that's kind of the fun. That's the mystery of it. Uh, these types of games are more about storytelling for me than the actual rules. So I hope you enjoy that as we explore the seventh continent with Elliot Pendleton and Mary Kingsley. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks, as always, for the subscriptions. Please continue to pump out the subscriptions because i got some more giveaways I want to do. And I'm waiting for... i got to check again, but I've been waiting for a couple of people, the last-minute responders, to the last giveaway so I can go ship them all at once. Please respond so that everybody can get their stuff. If you won, then you know because I put up a video for it. You can go check that video where I announce the winners and see if that's you or not. I drew them randomly from a generator. It's pretty cool. All right, guys. Uh, thanks. The other game that I had to get to the table was Massive Darkness. I wanted to get that one in there, too. But we're not going to do that yet. I, I played a ton of Massive Darkness from Cool Mini or Not over the weekend. Uh, had some friends over. We just were, were playing the story mode, so which is the campaign version of it. And we got our characters through the introductory scenario, which we lost the first time, by the way, because we were too aggressive. And then the second scenario or the actual first adventure uh, from the uh, prologue or introduction. So we completed both of those. We actually survived the second one. Um, not soundly, we were in trouble. Was, if we had any one character go down, which almost happened, we would have lost, but we didn't. At the very end, we pulled it out by the skin of our teeth. Really fun game. Kind of tense. A lot of fun. Pretty straightforward. That, that one's Massive Darkness, not this one. The Seventh Continent, though, is going to be super cool. There's so much storytelling in this, and you know how I love my storytelling. So... Guys, I will talk to you next time, and in the next video, we will get started really spoiling the heck out of this game. So uh, enjoy, and I'll talk to you soon.